Artists spend so much time trying to get their music to blow up that they don't realize that once a song takes off, there's only a small window of opportunity or that moment's gone and you gotta take advantage of it. That's what this video is about. What's up, I'm Brand Man Sean and my agency has helped over 100 artists grow their fan base and do over a million streams. I don't say that to sell you anything, I just say that just so you know where the information's coming from. Let's get to it. So the first thing to understand that when you blow up, there's gonna be a lot of what I call groundhogs. Now, if you know anything about a groundhog, at least in America, groundhog day is when a groundhog comes up out of the ground. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of things that are gonna come out of the woodworks that you don't see coming because you haven't been in that position before and it's gonna force you to have to think differently. And the biggest thing is going to be record labels, those relationships, and I'm gonna show you how to think about it in part one. So imagine that you blow up for a pre-save campaign or just a teaser, right? Because in a TikTok environment, you can literally post a song and next thing you know, your views go crazy. People start streaming all the other songs that you have because this song isn't even out yet. Your pre-saves are starting to run up because you finally launched a pre-save campaign. And I've been through this situation because we've had an artist have over 100,000 pre-saves. Artists have tens of thousands of pre-saves again and again and again. So here's what happens. You're gonna start seeing record labels say oh my gosh can I can I get a piece of this and when they want this piece of this there's a few things that you have to understand number one when you start to see a song pop and the song isn't out yet you have two to three weeks to drop that thing you have to take advantage of this momentum that's going to be the key word of this video momentum 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 you have two to three weeks max to make sure that song comes out and why am i saying this what well, happens in this situation when groundhog the big groundhog the label start to circle and circle and circle a lot of artists get so caught up in negotiations that they end up delaying when they drop their song. Or they say, hey, I, I want the label support, so I wanna wait until the label signs me and, and then I'll drop that song. No, because if you miss that window, people aren't gonna be hype anymore. You're gonna lose momentum, keyword momentum. But I'll get back to that at the end of the video. Second, if your song is already out, you have to keep posting, doing exactly, exactly what got you there. As you start to entertain some label conversations, the best thing to do, if you're like an artist that has a manager, is have the manager manage most of the conversations with people who are circling around. You have to have that happen because it becomes stressful to have a lot of those conversations and stay creative and do what you need to. And you need to keep maximizing that moment. Don't get caught up, right? A lot of artists find themselves First of all, you don't even need a label, right? And a lot of artists find themselves acting like Cinderella, waiting for their glass slipper and the, and the prints to come around and sweep them away. And you need to stay focused on the game because what's gonna happen is when the label comes around and then you start taking your eye off the ball, paying attention to them, you're going to start losing that momentum. And when you begin losing that momentum, guess what? They're gonna be like, um, you know, I guess you aren't as hot as I thought you were. It looks like the song has slowed down a little bit. You need to get that going and then we'll have conversations for there. They're like, but wait, I thought you loved me. No, they didn't love you. They loved the song, the moment that they thought they could capitalize on. So keep your eye on the fucking ball. All right, now, one thing before I really dig deep into the biggest secret of all this shit, stop paying attention to these A&Rs and these label people who come around and give you advice to just establish some sort of value. A lot of times, they'll give you some advice when they start to talk to you and entertain you to make it seem like they care or to make themselves seem valuable to you, right? But all this general advice they start saying, oh man, yeah, it's kind of confusing the content that you got going on, your brand's not clean, you need to delete all that content or delete all those songs so that you're, that's gonna build up your catalog as you start to take off. Yeah, we don't care about that. That's not the thing that you should be paying attention to. Why? Because one, a lot of these people don't actually know from the trenches level how this thing works. They don't understand that fans don't care about a lot of things that they're thinking about. They're just thinking about what's going to help them in the business model they want to run. And why are you taking advice from somebody who hasn't even invested any money on you yet? Why? It doesn't make any sense. So, hey, say, 
I know what I might listen to that when you sign me. Yes, I'm coachable, but it doesn't make sense for me to do this until you sign me because I'm sure you might have a plan that this makes sense for. But what's got me here and what's going to keep me going is to do what I've already done. And it's in my best interest to let my catalog build up because right now I'm an indie artist. So I need to let my numbers build up. I want that money that's going to come in. I'm not about to get rid of my catalog just because you told me to. All right. And this is where shit hits the fan because you took your eye off the ball, so infatuated with this label. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they would entertain me. And also you took their bad advice that doesn't come from anywhere real. And as you did this, you started to lose what? Momentum. And what happens there is the label starts to back off. Why? That action proves exactly what I'm about to say. The labels can't buy momentum. That's the secret that nobody wants to say. The labels cannot buy momentum. I'll say one more time, the labels cannot buy momentum. Why is this so important to understand? Because if you're in this position where they're reaching out to you, you have built up some momentum. Your song has taken off on TikTok or whatever platform. And when it's moving, that's the thing that they're always looking for. What the labels can do with their money is accelerate momentum that's already occurring. They can bring more awareness and expand the horizons once something already has taken off. Now, the value to you, if you want to take that deal, that's a whole other conversation there. But they cannot make a song take off. They cannot create the spark. They can have a lot more money to invest, which could increase the possibility that a song will take off and build some momentum, but they cannot create momentum. And they know it's very expensive to try to create momentum again and again and again. So what they do is look for momentum that's already occurring and try to suck the life out of that thing, or better said, at least just accelerate that progress so they can minimize their risk because labels are only risk management institutions. That's what they are. When they are trying to sign you for a deal, well, they have some guys in the accounting department that determine what your worth is. So the guy who's talking to you can say whatever he wants to say. He could desire you as much as he wants to. As a matter of fact, this could be a really good dude. This could be a really good woman that really does see value and have a vision for you, but they can't go over that number that the accounting department determines what you're worth. So the label as a whole, no matter what the people that you're speaking to think of you, right? Overall, the perspective that it's coming from is nothing but some numbers on a piece of paper. That's how they have to behaviorally treat you because of these are risk management institutions. These aren't creative music marketing and branding institutions like they may so seem because of just the history of things. But even more today than yesterday, all of that is being stripped away. Why? Because yesterday the labels did have to take on a lot of the marketing and branding aspects of things. Today, ah. Eh, it doesn't even make a lot of business sense for them to have a lot of the marketing go on. So they end up hiring other institutions. But that's a whole nother conversation. These are the things that you need to understand. At the very least, if you take anything away from this video, momentum is something that labels cannot buy. And when you establish it for yourself, you have all the leverage in the world and you need to make sure that you double down, triple down, quadruple down in the actions that got you there continuing to post, continuing to figure out how can I bring awareness to this thing? Sometimes a label can be a part of that, but I'll give you insights on that in a whole nother video. As a matter of fact, I'll put it in the description and at the end of this video, but I don't quite have a title around it yet. It might be something like why labels are so focused on signing artists from TikTok, but check that out. It's going to be up here at some point. And on top of that, we still have part two of what to do when your song blows up, when it takes off and it's going to be a lot more marketing focus so now that you know eh, I don't really need to be so enamored with these labels but what of course does that mean I should do that's what we're going to talk about in part two all right let's get it